It's an unofficial holiday during the summer here on the Sports Cubicle with the Marvelous One, Dan Marver, Devin Tingo, Paul Shavari throughout the entire show, where teams are finally starting to report for training camp. That's right. A lot of rookies are now reporting for their respective teams. In about a week, the Chicago Bears veterans will be showing up to training camp over at Lake Forest, over at Hallis Hall to start this next season. And one of the conversations that's happening nationally for NFL fans, for football fans, for fans of financing in the sports world is running back pay, or in this case, lack thereof running back pay. And this comes to us from our friends over at USA Today. Jared Bell wrote this article. Check it out. NFL running backs are getting stiff-armed on pay. There's no easy fix for the problem. So check out the entire article, but I wanted to highlight some of the stuff that he brought up, which is pretty interesting. It starts off, mamas don't let your babies grow up to be running backs. Instead, let them become quarterbacks, defensive ends, linebackers, cornerbacks, anything but a running back, if value and appreciation is in the equation. There's a reality check takeaway from the developments this week when franchise tag running backs Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, and Tony Pollard were unable to strike long-term contracts before a Monday deadline left to roll with the dice with their financial futures. Sure, they could collect $10.91 million this season by playing on the franchise tag, but in the context of NFL quote-unquote moneyball, $10 million for an elite playmaker is relative chump change. Jacobs, 25, only led the NFL with 1,653 rushing yards, that's 4.9 yards per carry, and 2,053 yards from scrimmage last season, amassing a league-high 393 touches for the Las Vegas Raiders. Barkley, 26, accounted for nearly 30% of the New York Giants offense in 2022 with his 1,650 yards from scrimmage. And Tony Pollard, 26, is an emerging star who supplanted now out-of-work Ezekiel Elliott as the top threat in Dallas Cowboys backfield. Never mind their production, their franchise tags, lowest for any position besides kickers and punters, would have them rank. 201st in the league for average salaries, according to Spot Track. So check out the entire article again, written by Jared Bell at USA Today. NFL running backs are getting stiffed arm on pay. There is no easy fix to this problem. So, Dev, obviously being Bears fans growing up in Chicago, we may not know how to assess and how to judge quarterbacks and how to scout them. But we know how to scout linebackers, and we know how to scout running backs in the city. And we know how important a great running back is to an offense, to a young quarterback, to being able to move the ball, to be able to kill clock, to be able to just run the game you want it to be ran. But we also know that the money positions have completely changed. We've seen how they use and abuse running backs. Where do you fall on this conversation of whether or not to pay running backs, the NFL not paying running backs, just the conundrum that we've seen this position take over the last 10, 15 years. It's a real sting of where to begin, Mercado, here, because as we all know, running back, if you just watch football, if you play football only watch football, you know these guys are getting hit a lot and they're getting hit hard, especially guys like Barkley in New York. That guy can rush for over 100 yards in a game because their quarterback – who they're paying forty million by the way, and Mr. Daniel Jones. Yeah, call me when you actually you, you know you look like Eli. Sure is you play, play like, like bad him. Eli Manning, <laughs> but that's a different story there. But we just kind of see this so much, you know. It's like these are running backs that get hit hard. I mean, how often do you see a running back on the IR or inactive right before a game on a Sunday? I literally feel like running back. I'm not gonna you know give out a stat, but I'm if it's not number one, it has to be up there in like the top injured players like of. Just throughout any NFL season, you see it all the time here. I mean, that's why every team has at least two running backs. And, you know, we see this especially, I mean, I want to go back to um, Blanket on the Year, but it was Matt Forte's last year of the Chicago Bears. I forget the exact number he wanted, but everyone's like, oh, no, we can't give Forte that because if he breaks his back, which they were worried he's going to break his back because he had back issues, remember, Mm -hmm. that's all that money we have to pay because he can't play anymore. This man's career is over and he broke his bleeping back. And we just, it's such, the thing about running back is it's its such like a dime a dozen. Let's just take a look at the Bears in the past, like, t- um, 10, 11 years. We had Matt Forte for a while. Then we had uh, Michael Bush. Then Jeremy Langford. Then Jordan Howard. Then Tariq Cohen. Then we stayed with Cohen for a little bit because I don't know who he had naked pictures of back there. 
He, oh, Matt Nagy used to love thinking he had Kareem Hunt. Yeah, and then there was oh, the Kareem Hunt deal. Yeah, don't. Be well, they tried to get Kareem Hunt. That was the guy they wanted. Don't get me started, Mr. Matt Nagy. Everyone is. It's funny where the team is now, where it's like we want to focus on the culture, but Matt Nagy with Kareem Hunt is well, everyone deserves a second chance. Yeah, different days. That's neither yeah. here nor there. We're talking about running backs right now. But it's a good point, though. It's like the type of running back matters, and how long you stick stick with them if they're cost of, if they're affordable. Exactly, but you know. The days just it's I'm not seeing running backs that are lasting for, you know, like ten plus years like we did back in the day. Well, there's the exceptions, right? Like there's always the Derrick Henry's of the world and Joe Mixon's and Austin Eckler's like there's the cream of the crop. But like let's say somebody like Austin Eckler. What is more cost efficient or more beneficial for the LA Chargers? To give Austin Eckler a big deal or whatever money they were gonna give him to surround Justin Herbert, who is going to get a lot of money, to make sure that they accentuate all of his talents and what he does best. I think you bring up a great point where they are a dime a dozen. You can find great running backs in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round on restricted free agents, unrestricted free agents, people who didn't get drafted on somebody's practice squad. There's always going to be ballers out there that are going to be able to get you over the hump or be able to be a bridge guy from running back to running back to running back. I think it's possible to live in a reality where you want to see these guys get paid, but you also think it's financially responsible not to pay them. I think both things can be true. I think it can be true where I, as a fan, want to see a David Montgomery get paid, but I'm glad that the Detroit Lions paid him and not necessarily the Chicago Bears. Both things can be true because I understand where the value is. I'd rather have another DJ Moore than having a paid David Montgomery. There are things that you need to do that are important. Now, if you're, let's say, the Cincinnati Bengals, you've been able to fix your offensive line, you obviously have stud wide receivers, and you have the answer at quarterback, and all you think you're missing is a Joe Mixon, well, then, yeah, you you pay him his money now because now is your time to win. What happened with Seattle, though? Seattle, once they decided to pay their quarterback, were not able to pay everybody else like the Marshawn Lynch and the Legion of Boom. You have to be smart on where you invest your money and if it's going to pay and work out for you. I think somebody like the Kansas City Chiefs, they're never going to invest on a running back again because they invested all their money on Patrick Mahomes and they'll probably pay Travis Kelsey. It's the reason they didn't invest in Tariq Hill and he ended up in Miami. Next 15, 20 years before they have to worry about those issues. And think about, right, like how much of a difference that does. Now, for the Chicago Bears, let's let's be homers for a second. If you're the Chicago Bears, if Justin Fields runs for 700 yards but is passing for 2,000 consistently, that's what you want. You're okay with that. It's the, it's the Trevor Lawrence effect. It's like, okay, now you can get them tight ends here and you can build your defense here and whatnot. But Justin Fields doesn't need a Derrick Henry, a $25 million running back. That does not help your case if you're the Chicago Bears. Now, if you're a team who thinks you can win the Super Bowl and that's what you're missing to help kill four minutes, let's say you're a team like, oh, I don't know, the Philadelphia Eagles, right? You have almost every answer in the book. And you thought you did at running back, but let's say somebody like Josh Jacobs is available. Do you feel better going into the last four minutes of that Eagles Chiefs game knowing that they have the final answer to chew clock? So they have a quarterback that could kill you with his feet and his arms, wide receivers that could kill you with possession and being able to stay in bounds, and then a running back who's actually good. That only makes sense then. It doesn't make sense, though, if you're like the New York Giants. You invested all this money on Daniel Jones. Who is the actual offense on that team, though? But can you win a Super Bowl with your main offensive weapon being a running back? I don't know. Derrick Henry hasn't gone to a Super Bowl. Ezekiel Elliott never led the Cowboys to a Super Bowl. Like You start going down the list of Dalvin Cooks and any of these other top-tier running backs. Like I don't know. I think we live in a reality where it's responsible not to pay your running back. It just is. Like As cold-hearted as it is, you shouldn't be paying your running back top-tier free agent money. Yeah, but I'm going to go from the human side of it. Yeah, of too. course. Yeah. And especially, it's. I mean, I, I, I played football. I was the kicker and punter, so not nearly as good as anyone else there is uh, physical or is getting hit as much as everyone else here. But running backs take a freaking beating. So I think either we need to either A, Goodell needs to, you know, um, make some more rules to protect running backs, and people are already mad about a lot of the rules he's making, or B, we need to broaden the salary cap, which could go one of two ways. Either A, they start playing the running backs, or B, they just start spending way more money on everyone else. So it's... On the quarterback. Like I say, I, like I like to say about a lot of things, Mercado, everything sounds good in theory, it's when you put people in, it gets messy. And that's just where I see it right now here. So while I do sort of agree with you that, yes, the running backs are not necessarily going to win, but 
let's take a look at the Super Bowl where uh, good old, you know, Russell Wilson uh, threw a nice interception in the end zone with, what, like three seconds left? To win, yeah. New England winning at Super Bowl. Yeah, had you give it to Marshawn Lynch? Yeah, they would if just imagine, though, if they didn't have Marshawn Lynch, if they had someone like, let's, uh, I'm trying to think of a really, like, a, a B, C tier running back right now. C, like Deontay Foreman. Yes. Now a Chicago Bear, who's a yeah. good running back, but, like, you know. Yeah. If that's your guy, would you be comfortable, you know, you might have been like, hey, throwing it makes the most sense here. So you can. it's been proven that you can lose by not using your running back, and therefore I guess you could say you could lose some games by not, you know, having your running back. But let's go back to the Giants here. I mean, Saquon Barkley has been the offensive leader of that team. Heck, that game against the Bears where they had Mike Glennon. Remember when he played for us, guys? Yeah. And he rushed for, like, what, almost like 200 like, he's a beast. yards? Yeah, he's, he's... They still lost. But it's just, it's like, this is something we need to go here. It's like, you got to just find the pieces in the right place here. And the Eagles are a prime example. I mean, yes, they did lose the Super Bowl this year, but they have all the right pieces in place right now. They just, it was just the Chiefs are the better team that night. And I feel like that is, I feel like the Eagles right now are kind of the model everyone should follow here. The only time you should spend money on a running back that's high volume in money or it costs high volume in assets is when you think you're close to a Super Bowl. And when that running back is of the ilk of Christian McCaffrey and Austin Eckler and that type of running back. Because the running back position now has taken something that the NBA is doing, where it's positionless. You can't be a downhill running back anymore. You're going to be broken, you're going to be beaten, you're going to be used and spit out in this league. You need to be able to stay healthy, and you need to be able to make an impact on the field beyond just having to touch the ball 20 times down the center's butt. You have to be able to catch the ball. You got to be able to block. You got to be the jack of all trades. Like the top tier running backs. Like it was for a while with Alvin Kamara. Like Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, you know, the guys that go very high in the fantasy draft. But in a league where there's Justin Jefferson's and Jamar Chase's in the world, you have to be special because that's what they're investing their money on now. So if I'm a team that thinks I'm close to a Super Bowl, yeah, I go after one of the great running backs that's floundering or looking for money at a bad team. But if I'm a bad team, I spend all my draft assets on getting my quarterback and surrounding him with proper money at the winning positions. The most important position in football is what? Quarterback. What's the second most important? The guy that goes after the quarterback. What's the third? The guy protecting the quarterback. The fourth? The guy catching the ball from the quarterback. The fifth? The guy blocking the guy catching the ball from the quarterback. It's a long way until you get to running back. So you have to be smart and you just have to be able to assess where your franchise is at. Devin, any final words? Fun conversation. Football's here, baby. I mean, I, I, I want to go another topic here for another day, but I'll just, I'll, yeah. I'll close on this one here, Mercado. You could easily make that argument of you should be paying big money to any position if you think you're close to winning a Super Bowl here. And I do enjoy seeing the rise of these running quarterbacks coming out here. But here's the thing. Michael Vick was a great running quarterback. Take away the dog fighting in the prison for a few years, and how many rings does he have to show for it here? How sure. many injuries did that man have to show? And that's the thing here, though. It's like if we're going to see a rise in rushing quarterbacks, you know, we're seeing it with Fields and Trevor Lawrence here. How much longer till they become the new running backs where they're getting, you know, beat up, knocked around here, and all that money you're throwing near quarterback kind of goes away here. And I'm going to actually push back a little bit. I think number one most important player on the team could also be the kicker because how many times have we seen a bad kicker cost team a big game? It's a great point. No, I think I would put kicker as the most important variant. Yes. I wouldn't say it's the most important position. It's the most important variant that if you don't have correct, will cost you in the margins. I'm just making a smart-ass comment. It's a pretty good one, though. You're right. Like, how many... Vinatieri would like a word with us, right? Like, we know how important it is to to do that. I, I think, and just to jump off your point really fast as we end this one, the quarterback position is important, and this is why it's so important to make sure you're investing in him properly. Because let's say you have a Joe Burrow. We're talking about Jamar Chase. You need to be able to protect them in the pocket. Not that you have to have him give him a lot of time, but just enough time for him to be able to move up the pocket a little bit, get his throwing foot and his motions correct, and be able to launch the ball. For Justin Fields, it's more, can we get athleticism out there? Can we protect them with that type of big linemen, fast receivers, easy targets? Either way, it costs money to do that. It costs money to protect your quarterback and to make sure his weapons are of his ilk that accentuate his talents. And I don't know if there's a running back in the league that justifies that when you're not a second away from winning the Super Bowl. And that's the conundrum I think every GM and owner is having right now. Take away like them being cheap. The conundrum is, do I pay the most sensitive position, the most, the position that's most in danger every single play? A lot of money. 
something we're going to see the NFL try to address over the next few years. But we'll be addressing everything that's NFL-related, college football-related, Northwestern-related, Cubs and Sox-related, because the dog days of summer may be starting, but there's no slow time in sports, as we've learned over the last few weeks. Make sure you're following us all over the universe. We're on Twitter at SportsCubicle TV. We're on YouTube at the Sports Cubicle. Everywhere else, wherever you get your favorite podcast, at Sports from the Couch. And, of course, the amazing SoundCloud at WCPT820 and Heartland Radio Signal. Check it out. Make sure you guys are supporting us there. It means a lot. And speaking of supporting us, check us out over at Sheets and Giggles. Feel great taking a nap this summer season by using the promo code, the Sports Cubicle, Sports from the Couch, for 15% off your next purchase. For the Marvelous One, Dan Marver. For Devin Tingle. For Paul Shivari, I'm Mike Mercado.